the Arbresh are an Albanian group of people that fled to Italy during and after the Ottoman invasions of southeastern Europe, while Albanians fled to other parts of Europe as well. A large percentage of them fled to Italy due to its close proximity to Albania and due to Italy's willingness to help. Over the hundreds of years that followed, many integrated into Italian culture and identity. However, it is estimated that up to 200,000 Italians have and are aware of their Albanian ancestry. Many are largely integrated into Italian society with only a distant knowledge of their origins. Others were more successful in preserving their traditional clothes, culture, religion, language, and identity. Cultural festivals with traditional clothes and dances are still held all over our British enclaves in Italy. Arbresh have contributed to Albanian society throughout the hundreds of years of living separately from us with diplomatic and financial funding, literature, and education despite their distance away from Albania. They remain patriotic and are proud of their Albanian blood in the same way that Albanians all over the world care deeply about our country today. However, there are many documentaries on this subject already, so instead I will be focusing on a particular Arbresh town, which is not very widely known about. As a matter of fact, the only way I learned about them was by complete chance while simply searching on the internet if there were any Albanians in New Orleans before I visited the great city. I am very glad that I did because doing so led me to learn about a distant yet familiar world that I knew nothing about. Their story begins over 500 years ago and is connected with our great national hero Skanderbeg, which I will refer to in Albanian as Skanderbeu. Skanderbeu is famous for uniting the Albanian people to successfully fight off the invading Ottoman armies. The Ottoman Empire had aspirations to conquer Europe and at its peak reached as far north as a stone throw away from Vienna and as far west as Italy. The Ottoman Empire was truly a force to be reckoned with while Albania was a small nation which would be conquered and ruled by the Ottomans for hundreds of years. However, the Ottomans were unable to do so while the great Skanderbeu united the Albanians in valiant battle against them. Skanderbeu fought armies many times the size of his and resisted successfully until his death. Skanderbeu had European allies which supported him in hopes of halting the Ottoman invasion before they could reach their nations. However, this was Europe, and in typical European fashion, Europeans found time to war with each other despite the greater Ottoman threat. While Albania was resisting the Ottomans, Italy was divided into multiple kingdoms which often fought each other. Alfonso V, the ruler of the Kingdom of Naples, was at the time fighting rebellions in his kingdom and asked Skanderbeu for military support. Despite the fact that Skanderbeu had a much more formidable enemy at his doorsteps, he sent three Albanian military garrisons to Italy to help his ally. Alfonso's father had been a great ally to Skanderbeu, and Skanderbeu decided to help, famously saying, I am a friend of virtue, not of fortune. The Albanian troops proved effective as they helped to crush the rebellions. After their victory, they were sent to Sicily to crush the rebellions there. 
Their garrisons were successful in Sicily as well. After the victory, a large number of soldiers from each colony went back to Albania to continue fighting the Ottomans, while the rest split and each founded their own town. Those who left fought alongside Skanderbeu until Skanderbeu died of old age. When Skanderbeu's son took over leadership, he was not able to hold the Ottomans back like his father, as he simply didn't have the same military aptitude. The Arborish fought until they understood that the dark fate was sealed, and only then did they return back to Italy, bringing with them the nobility and dukes of Albania. When the boats had put out to sea, and the mountains descended below the horizon, all the warriors sighed profoundly, and the women cried out loud, O oh, Albania, farewell, farewell Albania, Jaku in Ishprishur. They returned back to the Arboresh settlements in Sicily. The three settlements that were founded were Mezzoyuso, Palazzo Afriano, and Contesa Entelina. Contesa Entelina was founded 600 meters high up in the mountains for protection. I don't believe the mountains of Italy were as beautiful as those of Albania, but they were beautiful mountains as well, a terrain Albanians understood well. I believe the majority of the nobility settled in Contesa due to the added protection. Those who settled Contesa and Telina, 50 miles south of Palermo in the district of Corleone, came to be known as the Contesioti, a great and honorable subgroup of the Albanian population. The Contesioti lifestyle is and has always been rooted in faith, family, and tradition. They are and have always been very religious, perhaps due to the fact that they fought so hard for the Albanian people and faith. Even today, four grandiose churches stand in a town with a population of only 2,000. The Contesioti were Orthodox Christians until 1724, before the Byzantine Church switched over to Catholicism. However, they maintain a very unique form of Catholicism akin to Orthodox Christianity in many ways. They retain their traditions, vestments, liturgies, brevity, and canon law. The priests are called papas. They have long beards and are allowed to marry. Their church remains autonomous, although obedient to the Catholic Church. The Contesioti are among the best at preserving their Arborish identity out of all original and subsequent Albanian settlements in Italy. They named streets after Skanderbeu and other respected Albanians. They kept the traditions. They spoke Arborish, and even their coat of arms is still until today the Albanian flag. The Contesioti kept very strict rules against intermarriage with Sicilians. If somebody from the town married a Sicilian, they were often ostracized to the point where they left. But this is only half of the story of the great Contesioti people. Starting in the mid-1800s, many Italians, especially Sicilians, migrated to the New World for reasons similar to those of other European immigrants. However, for the Arboresh of Italy, extreme poverty was not a major reason as the Arboresh were in general wealthier than the Italians. The majority of the Arboresh, among them the Contesioti, moved to New Orleans, which still remains the highest concentration of Arboresh in the United States. However, many others immigrated to cities like Chicago, New York, Sacramento, San Francisco, LA, San Jose, Newcastle, Stockton, Madison, Tampa, Houston, Dallas, and more. Others went to different countries as far out as Brazil. Contessa and Tolina has always had a lot of outward immigration throughout the past few centuries. Their population has never been able to peak past 4,000, yet there are tens of thousands of people descending directly from that town. There were more Contessioti in New Orleans than in the old town in Sicily. The poorest among the Italian immigrants initially worked in agricultural plantations, 
and later as seamen, musicians, and artists. After, they left the hard work at the docks behind and many established themselves in grocery and food trades, business, and other skilled trades. Among them were the Arboreche and the Contesioti. Many worked in the French market, dealing in wholesale produce, a trade they knew from the old country. Everyone, it seemed, at one time or another, either ran a grocery or worked for an uncle who did. One Arboreche woman recalls, I had an aunt who was over there already. I stayed with her in the French Quarter, then later with my uncle in Mid-City. In the home, everyone spoke Arboreche. They had a grocery store. That's where I learned my English. However, even in New Orleans, the Arboreche lived separate lives from the Sicilians and other Italians. They saw each other as different and kept to themselves. The religions were different and the Contesioti still spoke Arboreche in their homes and shops. Differing from the Sicilians, the Arboreche went by male lineage rather than female, unlike the Italians. The Arboreche functioned as a patriarchy as opposed to the Italians who go by the matriarchy. They even lived in different parts of the city. On September 8, 1886, the Contesioti of New Orleans united in brotherhood by founding the Contessa Antelina Society, the first Italian society formed in the city. The society also became its largest and its wealthiest. Several of the early arrivals had outstanding success and were in a position to be of substantial help to those who arrived. Among the founding members of the society were Giuseppe and Felix Vassaro, who organized the Standard Fruit Company and restaurateur Luigi Tortorich. The society offered protection from exploitation. It offered shelter, work, and relief to its members. The society provided a doctor, a pharmacist, a burial crypt, but most importantly, they sought to preserve the rich heritage of the Arboreche people and to keep their people united and to give them a sense of belonging. They held picnics, banquets, and even an annual parade. The society only allowed members which could prove their lineage back to Contessa Antelina. Only men were allowed to join, and membership only went through the male lineage. A daughter's male offspring was unable to join. At its peak, the membership reached nearly 600. However, it then steadily declined as there were outside pressures claiming that the society was no longer necessary as the Contesioti became very successful people in relation to other immigrant groups. There was also a lot of pressure to conform from within the family as the parents and grandparents wanted the children to learn English and become Americans. The parents and grandparents would speak Arboresh, but only when they didn't want the children to understand. The number of members today stands at around 100, but there are new efforts to grow the membership again. It is proving successful as the number of members is again increasing. However, they are still extremely strict with who can join. It is paradoxical that no one could get into the New Orleans' oldest Italian society unless they can prove that they are linear descendants on the male side of the family from the Albanian families that settled Contessa and Telina. By the 1920s, there were an estimated 20,000 Arboresh in New Orleans, and this community has contributed much to New Orleans throughout the years. The society was always present in city parades and has had a big influence through its members working as lawyers, doctors, businessmen, and public servants. The Arboresh mayor of New Orleans from 1961 to 1970 was Victor H. Schiro. Arboresh Antonio Monteleone was a wealthy businessman and owner of New Orleans' most famous hotel, Hotel Monteleone. Other prominent Arboresh businessmen are Luigi Tortorich, Frank Manal, the Vassaro brothers, Charles Lamana, Nick Castro Giovanni, and more. There are too many successful individuals to name, but many Arboresh last names are well known and respected in New Orleans. I will include Arboresh last names that I am aware of so you can do further research on them if you are interested. The society still meets and is very passionate about their lineage and keeping their traditions alive. They care deeply about Albania and some still visit Albania and share their photos and experiences with each other on the society's Facebook page. 
It is amazing that a group can be separated from their mother country for hundreds of years, among other groups of people, and still maintain such an affinity for their roots and preserve elements of our culture that the Albanians lost under Ottoman rule. They are truly an inspirational group of Albanians that other Albanians should try to emulate. Despite their strong Albanian identity, they never forget to honor the Italian and American flag at every event. There are endless personal stories with documentations and photos that I could not possibly fit into one video, so if this topic interests you, I hope that I have inspired you to do further research. The Contessa Antelina Society needs funds to restore the society's tomb. I don't know if this video will reach 5 views or 10,000 or more, but if you are watching this video and can afford to make a donation to them, it would be a grand gesture. You can find them on Facebook. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel for more. There were 31 towns that were built by the Greeks and the Albanians after the war with the Muslims in 1452. Okay. All right. As you know, the Battle of Lepanto was 1517, that was a little bit later. But in, in the 1400s, the three armies, the Albanian armies, all the royal families were sent, were brought over to Sicily by Pope Nicholas V. Pope Nicholas V. And they built all these little towns, and they built Greek Byzantine churches in every one of the little towns. And most of the places they still speak Albanian and